All right, guys, what is up? Uh, welcome back home. This is Papa Talk. Thanks for stopping in on the stream. Uh, tonight we're going to be streaming some Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Um, I'm going to introduce our players in just a minute, but first I want to talk about the actual one-shot that we're going to be running. This is something called uh, the Wild Sheep Chase, and this is something that is put out by Winghorn Press, which is a, uh, it's like a UK small publisher that puts out kind of like 5e content um, and a lot of other really cool stuff. Uh, I think that it's largely run by one guy. Um, and I'm going to give you his name because I want this guy to get all the credit in the world because he puts a lot of really cool stuff out there. Yeah, his name is R.M. Jansen Parks. He's a UK guy, and uh, he's the publisher of this one-shot that we're going to be doing. You can see that I included a link down there in the actual uh, title of this stream. Um, yeah, so before I give too much about the one-shot and get into spoilers or anything, I am going to go ahead and introduce our players. So, uh, if you guys just want to take a second to go ahead and, and uh, introduce yourselves. All right, my name is Opweek. Um, I was here last time for the first D and D session, and I was super grateful to be here. So I'm really excited for what we have today. Uh, don't forget, also uh, Oblique. Oop, I'm sorry to cut you off. I just want to say Oblique hi. does have a YouTube and a Twitch. I have included uh, you. Uh, I'm sorry, Oblique's Twitch in the title of this as well. So uh, be sure to check that out uh, either during or after. Um, anyway, go ahead, Savvy. Hi, I am Savvy or Sabs. Um, I had a lot of fun last time and I'm really excited for this adventure. And uh, yeah, that's all I got really. <laughs> Rock and roll. Got anything you want to plug? Any any uh, <laughs> any stuff you got going on online? I, I wish, I wish I did, but no. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to delay too much because, uh, <laughs> when's Marvel? Uh, I don't know, D-Gen. I don't know, buddy. Um, all right, so I'm not going to postpone too long. I'm going to kind of get this ready to ro uh, rock and roll. Our level's looking good, by the way, D-Gen. We looking good in chat. Everybody sounding good. You can hear everybody. I agree, Bleepcast. Look at all these wonderful people. Uh... Bleepcast, who's in the chat, who just mentioned, by the way, go check out his YouTube and his uh, Twitch as well. That's twitch.tv slash thebleepcast. Um, and he has all his links on there. You can find him from there. Um, good so far? Yeah? Great. Very cool. So. I am going to kick right off and say that, first and foremost, why don't you guys, real quick, just explain a little bit about your characters. I know you guys talked a little bit beforehand, so why don't we just include this as we're going. Why don't you explain maybe why you guys banded together uh, some stuff that, uh, at first glance, people might not know about your characters to make them a little bit more like real people. Flesh them out a little bit and just kind of have that brief conversation. Uh, for me to understand as well as the viewers. And we'll start with uh, Oblique. Okay, so I'm playing a wood elf druid named Arden Soft Clover. Um, he's a hermit. He was a priest for um, a place in his forest, and he's an herbalist. Um, he doesn't really like outside folk too much, um, but he met Sab's character through some interesting events. Um, <laughs> so, if Sabs wants to go ahead. Uh, sure. So, I'm Mandira Reviel. I am a dwarf fighter, a bounty hunter. My father trained me how to fight, and um, I use my services to help others. So, Arden hired me to help take down some... People who were destroying the environment, and we sort of befriended each other through that, and are now kind of adventuring together. Um, Andira really, she's kind of like a Robin Hood type, where she will, whoever's in need, but may do it, like steal from the rich, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so, um, knowing that, uh, I'm conveniently starting you guys off basically at a forest camp. 
it is just you two folks right now. Um, why don't we maybe talk, do a little bit of improvising, and I'll take an answer from anybody. Maybe why were you guys in this forest? Um, what was the last mission you were on, maybe? Or what is something that you might have just completed doing? Um, I would say maybe we had finished... Um, I was accompanying Randira on a quest to hunt down a witch that was poisoning the local water supply. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. That makes sense. Yeah. And um, so let's think, uh, what was maybe that witch's intent on poisoning the local water supply? Uh, revenge. Revenge? Awesome. Revenge for what? Mm-hmm. Uh, being ostracized from the town. I think that is perfectly... Being a witch. I think that is perfectly reasonable. Um, maybe... Let's name one type of hardship that you guys might have fought, or fought, or, uh, I guess encountered when trying to hunt down this witch and stop her, and revealing this plan of her poisoning the water supply. <laughs> Um, if you don't um, mind. I th oh, go ahead. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, I was just going to say that maybe part of the bounty was going to be that um, the people who hired Randira wanted this witch killed, but we understood the witch's feelings and just wanted to make sure that, you know, everyone would be safe in this situation. Yeah, that's great. Did you have anything? That's literally what I was going to say. Yeah. So. No, I'm all about it. That's great. So Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> Same wavelength. Yeah, let's... Uh, by the way, yes. de Degenerate in Chess is an answer from anybody. We were collecting hallucinogenic mushrooms. Somebody poisoned the water in hole. Uh, let's, <laughs> so, yeah, I really like that. So let's say that you came into a small village uh, recently, and you encountered a bunch of people whose water supply had been poisoned. Let's say that this poison wasn't particularly lethal, but it did give great uh, uh, discomfort. So it was uh, providing them with, like, cramps, and hallucinations and headaches and all sorts of uh, physiological systems that weren't easily remedied. Um, and this was, an, uh, this was a revenge plot from a, a local woman in the town who was originally wrongfully accused of being a witch. And then once she was fully ostracized and, and exiled, she decided to pick up some of the magical arts in order to exact her revenge uh, on these unjust townspeople. Um, you were brought into this knowing that these unjust or that these townspeople were sick, and that's really all you knew. And once you discovered this 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 whole plot, uh, you understood that she the, this witch was more a victim of circumstance than anything. Um, in trying to reach a diplomatic solution, you did in fact spare the witch's life, and she was able to kind of live undisturbed. And she did stop attacking these villagers. Um, but you were exiled and ostracized by the villagers. Um, they didn't want you anywhere near, which is why you guys are off in the forest. You've been pushed off, which means that they were not, uh, they were not in a good place to be offering you room and board, nor, um, any items other than what you'd collected before you set out on your quest, so you're all gonna have one healing potion, which is gonna be 2d4 plus 2 healing. Um... And I will take a constitution check, a group constitution check from whoever thinks that it is better because you guys were unable to sleep in the inn in the town, so you've been sleeping on the cold, hard ground. And it's been wearing on you, so we need to see if you're maybe exhausted. I can do that. Go for um, it. Remind me, it's a slash roll. Yep, it's going to be slash roll and then space 1d20 plus whatever your constitution modifier is. Are we sure the water was poisoned, or are we sure this wasn't just dysentery? How far are we from the Oregon Trail? Yeah, I know. I would. <laughs> that's a really good, great plot line to think of. Maybe, uh, maybe this witch, this quote, witch wasn't doing anything anyway. She wasn't magically imbu imbued whatsoever. It's just this whole town got dysentery. It was just another thing to pin on this poor woman. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, leave it to chat. That's uh, that's possible. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we rolled an 18. Awesome. So basically, you guys have been traveling yeah. outside for so long um, that you're not particularly phased by having to kind of sleep on the cold, hard ground. Not only that, it's probably late summer, early autumn, so the temperature is comfortable. 
um, not a concern. So you won't have to worry about anything like that going forward. Um, all right. So basically, is there anything that either Randir or Ad Ardan would like to say, knowing where they've come from, uh, where they are, which is basically in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the woods, making camp before they can kind of go on to their next adventure? Uh, is there anything either character would like to say? Uh, just my internal thoughts are probably, you know, it's a shame that the village doesn't really like us anymore, but this is kind of a relief just being in solitude in the forest. Yeah, absolutely. What does Randy ever think about that? Um, I wish that they were a little bit more appreciative or understanding, but we tried our best, I guess. Yeah. Is Randir from the forest originally? Um, she's actually a mountain dwarf. Oh, right. So, on. no. But, but, uh, she used to follow in her father's footsteps and be more of an adventurer. She really didn't want to stay behind in the mountains. So, she's become a lot more uh, loving of nature than yeah. her family. I like, dig that. you know, the, her brethren, I guess you should say. Yeah, cool. So, uh, just so we're clear on the minis, this is going to be you, Randir, and this is going to be you, Ardan, mm -hmm. um, over on the right. Uh, Mint says, have I missed the purple worm? <laughs> Degenerate says, trust me, as someone who's been kicked out of a lot of villages, you get used to them not liking you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think we're both kind of loners as it is, so it's not like a huge deal, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll say that you guys are of a particularly keen hearing, especially since the forest floor is, is kind of so quiet normally, and that you hear a lot of rustling and bustling up in the distance. Um, you hear the faint sounds of several different animals that you can't necessarily discern, um, and you also hear kind of uh, the guttural roaring and guttural grunting of uh, something that you recognize as likely being humanoid as it resembles a, uh, a language. Um, if you guys all want to make a, a hearing-based perception check, and you might be able to identify the animals. I'll take one from the group. I think I'll do it. Nice. All right, hold on. Plan. Seventeen. Great. Mhm. Mm so you recognize a sheep. Um, you also recognize. Uh, it would seem to be the heavy breathing and the low grumblings of what you think are dogs. Um, beyond that, you cannot tell. Um, you can tell that there must be someone, you know, pr likely driving these animals, as you can hear them in the back going kind of, yeah, 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 like these, these kind of noise, noises. Uh, um, all right. So, what you see in the distance, before anything, is a sheep. And it is coming up to you directly, um, as you can kind of see on the screen. It runs into you from the distance, going, meh, meh, meh. It looks like any other mundane sheep <laughs> in, in, the, uh, in Faerun, which is, you know, uh, a pillowy, woolen, white coat with, you know, kind of a bare face and... and black horn. I'm sorry, I think it's a black face and, and curling horns. Um, and it holds something in its mouth, and it seems to be kind of trotting in circles insanely uh, in front of you trying to get your attention. Okay. Tell what's in its mouth? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, which one of you is going to reach down and try to get it? Or check out what's in its mouth? I'll do it. Uh, yeah, so as you do so, you kind of reach down. It's interesting because the sheep kind of like reaches forward and like leans its head and its neck forward and it actually drops whatever it's in, in its mouth into your hand. Uh, you realize that this is a scroll. Um, and then the sheep kind of like frantically widens its eyes and it looks over at the scroll and goes, meh, meh. Uh, I'll read the scroll and then. Yeah, so popping it open. Uh, you realize that this scroll is a scroll of communicate with animals. Do you still want to read it immediately? 
Um, like, can I just read it in my head, or is it still gonna do something? Uh, yeah. As soon is as this you... the thing I gotta read out loud. Yeah, if you read a spell scroll aloud, um, it happens. It, it would happen. Also, you know, uh, Ardan might know more about this than I would. She's, you know, the <laughs> right. I'm just I will. I'll, I'll hand it over. I will hand it over to her because she's more adept with magic and things. Sure. Um. So sure, Ardian reads the scroll aloud. All right. So you hear the. Uh, what is it? The mewing. The mewing of the of the sheep. Is that what it is? The the bleeding. Bying. Bleeding. Yeah, bleeding. Yeah. Yes. Bleeding. Bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you you hear the bleeding of the sheep slowly uh, start to change uh change cadence and change timbre into a uh a voice speaking in common that goes meh, meh, help me help me oh help me please help me I'm in dire need of your aid. Settle down, young fellow. What's wrong? He says, my name is Finithea Shinebright. I was once a wizard of of quite reputable strength and power, but at this point, I'm in just dire need of anybody willing to stand in front of me in what comes along the uh, horizon. Um, as a druid, can I tell if this is like someone who's been turned into a sheep? <laughs> um, yeah, you could roll me a nature check. Just to be sure that we're not dealing with a crazy sheep. That's, I think, a totally reasonable. <laughs> reasonable. <laughs> All right, yeah. So you're all the six. Good thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, that's a pretty good nature check. Uh, you can tell that sheep typically probably wouldn't be this talkative nor this intelligent. Um, mm -hmm. His his diction is is better than any sheep you've ever spoken to, and we'll just say you've spoken to one or two in your time. <laughs> so, yeah, you you would think that it's likely that this is uh, this is actually somebody who's been turned into a sheep. DJ right. says he loves the idea of a sheep convinced he used to be a wizard, which I think is actually a really you great. You never know. <laughs> you Maybe I mean, you never know. that tainted uh, water. Yeah. <laughs> if you hadn't have made that check after uh. reading that comment, I might have completely rewritten this just to make that a thing. <laughs> the sheep is just, he's got his own little Tyler Durden. Um, <laughs> all right. I, I so, look over and, at him and I'm like, uh, what is he saying? Um... He's saying that he used to be a powerful wizard, and now he needs our assistance. His name is Phineas, is that right? And I look at the sheep. He says, no, 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 my name is Finithia. Finithia Shinebright. Ah, my apologies. So what seems to be the trouble? He says, well, it's a bit of a story, but if you've got the time, I'd be more than willing to tell it. You see, I had this, uh, this student, this adept of mine, named Ahmed Noak. And just then, you start to hear a distant howling Arr! in the distance and the grumbling of a much larger animal going. Uh oh. You see <laughs> directly in front of you. Oh. All right, yeah. So you uh, see uh, two. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just sarcastically replying. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Heavy Creamer says a, a wizard who was compelled to act nefariously and thus was condemned to sheephood. Um, so yeah, what what you see before you is a half orc that seems to have uh, kind of tight leashes on two full-on wolves. Um, standing next to him and slightly behind is a brown bear of full size. The interesting thing about this is that these animals are posturing so they're not ravenous nor wild. They're posturing themselves in that they're they look to be intelligently listening to what their leader is about, like how he's commanding them. Um the Half orc kind of looks at you menacingly, pointing to the sheep, and he says, "Why, thank you. I I would have been chasing after that sheep all day hadn't you stopped it in its tracks. I appreciate it. I'll be taking him now and leaving." 
before responding to the half uh, I look to the sheep <laughs> to see his expression. Uh, yeah, so the sheep facing kind of away from the half-orc and toward you, you can see his eyes just straight bugging out of his head and his teeth start chittering actively going... Go ahead, Randira, um, what were you going to say? I would... I'll move in front of the sheep and uh, ask him... What do you intend to do with this sheep? He says, you see, this is Master Noak's sheep. I don't intend to do quite anything to it other than return it to my Master Noak. Master Noak. Who's that? He says, uh... If you haven't heard of the great Master Noak, then sitting here and explaining him to you isn't worth my time. Just let it be known that he's the mo he's a most powerful wizard that can change man into beast. Uh, I turn to Arden. I'm like, this sounds like more your area of expertise. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure. <laughs> um, so Arden says, surely a master could do with one less sheep. Perhaps we can keep this if we have the coin. He says, hmm, interesting. Why would you be willing to pay for one just simple, mundane, boring, in fact, quite ugly looking sheep? Well, I think the sheep is rather cute. And in addition, we're just lone travelers. We need, you know, some sustenance. One sheep would be plenty of meals for us, some jerky and so on and so forth. Uh, so Fenethir looks you in the eyes and goes, Oh my! And he begins to turn away from you as though he's going to run. Is he within my range to touch him? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're adjacent. Okay, so I want to cast a Beast Bond. Okay. Which gives <laughs> me a telepathic link. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Totally. Okay, so... I tell him, calm yourself. We're not really going to eat you. Oh, no. Wait, wait, this wait. It's just wait, a ruse. Wait. Oh, no. Uh... Oh, simple emotions. Yeah, but you know what? Narratively, that's just so cool. It says if the beast intelligence is four or higher, which it most certainly is. But we're going to say that in doing this, you realize... Um, you reach out your hand and you touch this sheep. Uh, you try mm -hmm. to establish a beast bond. You realize that the intellect of this sheep is much higher than something that you've ever encountered before. Again, further reinforcing that this sheep is, in fact, um, something much smarter turned into a sheep. Um, this person, having claimed they're a wizard, you're, uh, you now have this basically confirmed because they've realized and said, Oh, you were trying to use beast bond. You don't truly intend to eat me. You were just merely trying to save me. Throw off... Uh, Throw them off the trail, as it were. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, I can stand here and look just like a sheep. No problem. And, I uh, wink at the sheep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he continues to I do think that. The, the sheep is probably blushing yeah. now because you called him cute and you winked at him. I know. Oh, my. <laughs> cute, you say. Um, yeah. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Um, he says, well, I don't know. You see... I could take your money and buy another sheep and bring that to Master Noak, but Master Noak seems awful fond of this sheep. In fact, this sheep's been part of the court for a long time, even before I was there. He sits outside in the garden all day. I, I think it might be one of Master Noak's prized possessions. I'm sorry, I just, I just don't think I can possibly take money for this sheep. Well, your master sure found... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, that's all I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a threat? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, um, your master sounds quite interesting. Perhaps we can come along and meet this wizard you said, right? Master Noak. Uh, you see, he, he's not too fond of visitors and... If I don't get back with this sheep, uh, I, he might be sore at me. Uh, 
Um, also, you yeah. see the sheep kind of frantically <laughs> nodding no at you. He's shaking his head like, you don't want to go anywhere near there, not to Noakes. <laughs> Gen keeps uh, talking about it. Fine, we'll eat the bear. Fine, we'll eat Master No. Fine, we'll eat the sheep. It's just one thing <laughs> after the next. Uh, I'm trying not to be violent. I don't want to do anything to this half orc. Um. Yeah, I mean. I mean. I have money. Hmm. Do you know what's so special about this sheep? I mean, can it do something like tricks? <laughs> he says, other than it being my job, uh, that's, I guess, the most important thing to me. Can I offer you money for the sheep? If you're going to be difficult about it and not hand him over willingly, I'd be willing to part with a small amount of gold myself in order to bring him back safely to Master Noak. Oh, no. I'd much rather... Need it. I'd much rather prefer to just come with you and meet your master instead. Um, he kind of looks down his brow at you and he says, I've told you many times I intend to take this sheep. I now see that we are placed with two options, the easy way or the hard way. Um, as you do that, they're not outwardly uh, being aggressive, but he drops the uh, leashes of these two wolves, and you start to see them get into a kind of like a standard flanking position. Sorry, I'm thinking... Oh, no, I completely understand. And you guys, don't feel free. I mean, don't feel free. <laughs> don't feel free. No, feel free to oh, talk, okay. communicate freely among yourselves. You know what I mean? Like, it's this is you don't have to RP it so hard. Like, you're just unable to speak with one another. You're not in turn-based combat yet. yet. I, I just have to share. This is really funny. I did, like, a random like a character generator with the stuff I wanted, and it gave me, like, 740 gold, which I feel like is... Oh, yeah. I'd say that's a little yes, more plausible than if I'm a bounty hunter. I could. Pay I mean, but I'm cheap. like, that's a little. <laughs> I'm like, that's a little crazy. I don't know. <laughs> um, listen, you're a bounty hunter. Hilarious. You got a lot of, you know. Yeah, I mean, rewards. I yeah. So a lot of work. that's a good segue. Uh, so into... what I'll say to him. Oh yeah, well, real quick. Oh, go ahead. That's actually a good segue into saying that. First and foremost, don't forget, you guys, you always have DM's inspiration, which means you can take advantage on any particular roll that you want, and that extends to a lot of stuff. If you roll damage you don't like, uh, you can re-roll damage. If you roll a hit attack, a roll you don't like, you can re-roll that. Uh, same with ability check. Or, an alternative use to that is to do something really super spectacularly cool, like I backflip over the, the flying car and run on top of a laser <laughs> beam and drop kick the dinosaur in the face. Like, you can do that kind of stuff. Um, just by saying, like, it'll basically gain you extra action economy, whatever you want, as long as it narratively is cool. Um, secondarily, if you guys ever want to do a check for any reason, so, like, hey, I want to try to intimidate or persuade or uh, lockpick or this, that, or the other thing, all you have to do is tell me what you want to do, and if, like, I'll suggest a check, or you can even suggest a check with me, and if, like I said, as long as it makes narrative sense, feel 100% free to, you know, run that. Um, I'm going to say, uh, I don't know if you've heard of me, but I'm a pretty well-known uh, bounty hunter around here, and uh, maybe we could, I can help you with something in exchange for allowing us to keep the sheep. Um, he says, interesting, what might that be? What do you have in mind? What do you mean, helping me out? If you there's any uh, anyone you might wanna get rid of, or you know some something you might want help with that way. Um, I... my skills are pretty great. So is she actually a bounty hunter in the area? Y yes. Okay. 
so he tells you basically master noak doesn't have many enemies you see he's one of the most powerful beings in all the land i don't have any particular enemies as i'm well protected by master noak but i might be able to use a favor later down the line um and he if you want to roll me a persuasion check i will say that it will likely be difficult I mean, it's probably not going to work, but I'll just do it anyway. <laughs> Doesn't hurt to try. <laughs> yeah. And if you, uh, Ardan, want to roll me a uh, insight check real quick. Oof. Yeah, okay. it's not great. Yeah, no. So 19. Yeah, that's great, actually. So you can tell that this guy carries himself like a person... Uh, like a person well-educated, but you can also tell that he is in no way a person well-educated. Um, it's very likely that he kind of, like, pulled a lot of his vernacular from his his charge, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. not from his liege, you know? Uh, so he's, he's standing with an air of confidence, but he's not the brightest guy. And I think as a byproduct of that, he's also fiercely loyal to Noak, and all he really knows right now is that, you know, Noak wants this sheep real bad. Um, he looks at your paltry attempt to persuade him into favors, and he says, There's nothing you could offer me that Master Noak doesn't already have in store for me. He needs me, he finds me important, and he's a great and glorious master with great magical power. Um, and he kind of, like, lays on the Noak worship. Also, Heavy Creamer says, I wonder if Papa Talk's going to try out the new 5e content. Coming out, or coming about a young, handsome man who is at the receiving end of a wizard spell called Haveth Child. <laughs> Slowly drains the PC throughout the campaign. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Oof. Dad jokes. Literally dad jokes. Um, so, yeah, he, uh, this, this, uh, this half-orc is not super responsive to attempts. How, um, how thick is the forest around us? Like, do the trees cast a lot of shadows? Yeah, yeah, I'd say that's reasonable to assume. I'd say it's probably relatively early morning, as this is something that happened um, right after camp. You guys were maybe roused by this, but there are certainly shadows in the air. Uh, I'm sorry, shadows on the ground being cast by the trees. Um, yeah, there's probably about 10 or 15 feet maybe a little bit less depending on the density between certain trees. Um, so there's lots of shadows. Okay, so what I'd like to do, if it's possible, is um, cast Pass Without Trace around us. Okay. Pass Without Trace. A veil of shadows and sounds radiates from you, masking you and your companions from detection for the duration. Each creature you choose within 30 feet of you, including you, has a plus 10 bonus to dexterity stealth checks and can't be tracked except by magical means. Interesting. Okay. Basically, I want to wave my hand, cast that, grab the sheep, and run. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. This is interesting. So as you do that, I, what I did was I table rolled um, stealth checks for these wolves. They didn't succeed particularly well. So you notice them coming around, still continuing to flank. It looks like uh, this half-orc was trying real hard to keep you guys kind of gabbing for a while um, while they flanked around the right and the left. You saw this. Uh, explain kind of how that looks, because I'm basically going to let you have a, uh, a hide from this. Okay. Um, so like I said, I just want to, you know wave my hand and do a quick incantation and just let all this shadow fall among us um, and as quietly as possible try to grab the sheep in my arms and just <laughs> you know backwards walk into the forest <laughs> you moonwalk with I, the I guess I guess I take that as my cue to like follow him <laughs> um, including as a plus two bonus to dexterity still so, that a plus 10 bonus is pretty significant. I'm going to say that this is a DC 25. Um, because it's not impossible, because it's super fancy magic. And I like it a lot, narratively. And I'm going to make you 
Ooh. I'm going to make all of you roll a stealth check. The only issue is you're going to be carrying a sheep. Um, <laughs> which is going to either make things harder in the DC or make you take disadvantage. Um, you have a plus 10, which will go a long way towards actually hitting an impossible DC of 30. But, or, or you can stick with the uh, DC of 25 and roll it twice and take the lower value. I will leave that to you, Ardan. Um, sure, I can roll for disadvantage. All right. So, yeah, everybody take make me a stealth check with uh, whatever their modifier is plus the 10. <laughs> so I'll do two of them, right? Yep. Okay. So there's the first one and the second one. All right, all right, all right, all right. So... <laughs> Wow, nice. Nice, 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 nice. So, um, here's the thing, is that you do this really cool, magical kind of uh, swirling effect bleeding you into shadows. Uh, and as you do this, uh, Randira kind of, she follows suit and says, oh, this is great. Like, you guys have maybe practiced this many a time before. Uh, this is a great way to get out of, like, gnarly encounters that you don't want to be in. Um, so she kind of ducks into the shadow. Randir, you have a stealth check now, so where would you like to be? You can technically be pretty much anywhere on the map as long as it's adjacent to, like, a tree, the foliage of the tree. Uh, how do I do the little, uh, oh, am I, am I doing it? Oh, uh, that's me. You just click and, click and hold with the select, the select key, select button. All right, so you want Oh, to... yeah, so, like, somewhere up there? Yeah. All right, cool. Is that okay? Yeah, that's right. perfectly fine. So you've stealthed and you've gotten out of the line of sight and you begin to vanish yourself, um, <clears throat> uh, Ardan. The only issue is that in grabbing the sheep, it causes you to fumble and uh, Fenethir wasn't particularly prepared for it. And he says, says, oh, oh, are you getting fresh now? <laughs> uh, and he's making a lot of noise and this kind of breaks your focus. Um, not necessarily preventing you from being hidden but alerting them via sound as to like your basic and general location um they can see the sheep they can't see either of you right now because you're magically hidden in shadow uh but in doing that the wolves think that you guys bugged off and left the sheep because uh you oh, were no. threatened by this half orc so what they're gonna do is oh, they're all gonna roll initiative oh. um Looks like the wolves are not going to be going particularly quickly. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. All right. You need us to roll? What's that? Did you need us to roll that yeah, as well? Yeah, please roll initiative, yeah. Okay. There we go. So, uh, Randira got a 12. Yeah? Okay, so. And Ardan got a 10. Okay, so first and foremost, the bear is going to be going. You start to see this brown bear, um... Uh, approaching the sheep and kind of help starting to triangulate its opinion, or its position. I'm sorry. It doesn't do anything hostile because it still can't exactly discern where you folks are. Um, at that point, it is going to go to Randira. Mm. So uh, at this point, the animals really can't see us. Uh, no, no, no. Neither the animals, nor the bear, nor the half-orc can see you. Uh, they can't detect you, actually, okay. beyond any means magical unless you want to be detected. Similarly, Mint says, I hope he hopes I have the chase rules hand here, not because he feels like this is where this is going. I had to run a chase in one of my last campaigns, and it was interesting. 5e chase rules are interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so you can do whatever you um, like. You can I don't, I don't know... 
Yeah, I don't know if I want... I mean... I don't know if I want to... do that yet. Do anything. Mm. But the sheep... It is basically the bears going after the sheep at this time? Uh, yeah. The bear is basically triangulating it, but it's not making any, like, hostile, hostile... Um motions. It's just kind of triangulating it with the wolves. It's not swiping at it or growling at it or getting ready to eat it or anything like that. Okay. Can I attempt to grab the sheep and bring it into our darkness? Uh, is I would... that not how that spell works? Well... <laughs> if I'm being honest, I don't think any of this is how this spell works. But this chatty sheep okay. ruined everything. Yeah, I, I think. Man, yeah. you you almost had it even with a disadvantage though. That was so stupid close. Um, yeah, no, I think if you reached out and tried to grab the sheep, it would probably break your magical uh, obfuscation. So you're kind of like I would say slinking around the bases of the trees and the shadows, kind of magically imbued with shadows type magic that uh, is making it. It's kind of, think of it kind of like a predator's. Predator's transparent yeah. armor type thing. That's what I'm thinking. And I guess I'll just I'll just um, I'll just have sheep the sheep behind me, and I'll get in front of it to defend it. But um, yeah, yeah, we'll let that fly. That's all right. No, I know I won't. I won't. I know I won't be hidden anymore, but. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, cha cha cha. I'm just trying to take a defensive stance in front of the sheep, but without. I, I don't know what the animals are doing yet, so. Yeah, so that makes sense. Um, yeah. I see. Hmm. So as you step out, you start to see the half-orc and the bears and even the wolves kind of jump and yelp in surprise. Like, Arr! like they did not realize where you came from, and you just kind of appeared out of thin air. Uh, and they got freaked by it, super freaked by it. Um, it's not going to be disadvantageous to them in any way. They just uh, hadn't been expecting you in the slightest. Um, but now that they're, they're, uh, they're assuming a more offensive posture since you've assumed a more defensive defensive posture um at that point it's going to go to the half orc uh the half orc is going to step up a few feet and he's also going to pick up a rock off the ground and he is going to throw it at the sheep let's see And so is that going over my head because I'm short-ish? Yeah. So he is going to hit it, right? So so he picks up this rock. He's going to be tossing it over your head. Um, again, in five E, it, it's to be assumed basically. There's no real uh, like cover rules it's almost all narrative so unless it's a relatively bad shot we'd assume you assume that all of the people fighting are in action dodging bobbing weaving moving and it's all happening simultaneously and that the person aiming the shot the armor class is a, it's a part of that you know what i mean so where it looks on the board isn't necessarily the truest yeah. representation you know what i mean um, so he picks up this rock and you start to see these bulging muscles popping out of his shoulders and his biceps and he tosses this rock super hard, uh, pegging the sheep in the shoulder. The sheep is going to make a constitution save. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, gonna make a constitution save to see if it is terrified and takes off. Oh gosh, boy. That was not great for him. Okay, so the sheep uh, skedaddles on his initiative order, which will be... He wasn't included originally. <clears throat> uh, and he's going to be going after Ardan. So the current order is the bear, Randir, uh, the half-orc, Ardan, the sheep, 
and then the wolves. So, um, at this point, it does go to our Dan. That's all that the half orc is trying to do. Okay, so he threw a rock at the sheep, and now the sheep is gonna hightail it and run. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. On his turn, he is gonna try to bolt as fast as he can, and you can kind of get the sense of that. This is what's happening. It looks like he was intentionally throwing that rock to try to spook the sheep. Hmm. See, I was debating with myself how much I want to put myself in harm's way and uh, possibly do wild shape to look like the sheep. Interesting. Interesting. That's very, very, very interesting. I would not say no to that, but again, this is entirely your prerogative. What do you think, Randira? What's a good plan? Uh, yeah, I'd say you could do that and then start running in a different direction. Yeah, I think so, that's a good idea. They don't know what's yeah, they don't know what's going on. Okay, so I'd like to try that. I'm gonna do now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna be able to do this, uh, but it's gonna be a relatively low DC. Can you describe? in casting Wild Shape, what, uh, how you're gonna kind of sleight of hand yourself <laughs> uh, <laughs> to the other sheep, you know what I mean? Or are you just trying to split, basically? Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I'm not being very eloquent about this, but are you just trying to make it two sheep running in different directions? Or are you trying to replace the other sheep with your sheep, like yourself? Um, I was trying to replace the other sheep with myself. Interesting. Okay, yeah, so describe how you might do that. Um, so I'm assuming I would throw off all of my gear kind of towards Randira, so hopefully she gets the hint, because otherwise I'm going to have stuff on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Why are you stripping That's first, seriously? <laughs> Oh, no, no, it just yeah. no, no. Like your it's equipment like, and stuff. <laughs> your equipment yeah. and stuff is like still on you. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be like a, a little sheep with a wooden shield and like a scimitar and you know a staff. So I'm gonna like yeah. throw off all my crap and <laughs> throw it towards Randira and then transform into this sheep, trying to remember you know its eloquent features. Yeah, yeah. All right. Sorry, I got some. Uh, I got some people spamming spamming links in the chat. They look like bots to me, so I'm uh -oh. saying that that was a successful, successful use of the uh, <laughs> successful use of this of the stream elements, uh, stream element spam blocker. So thanks. All right, so you're this is okay. So you're gonna try and pull off your stuff. That's fine. Typically, it would take several actions if it's a lot of stuff to like pull off, like basically dress and undress. <laughs> but we're gonna say for the sake of argument that you're not gonna have to do that. We'll say that you doing your beast shape, uh, because it's a woolly creature, the wool kind of extends out past your armor, <laughs> and it doesn't... You're very generous. Yeah, it, doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't look like you have to get nude in order to assume the shape of a sheep. Um, so, oh boy. Um, did you describe how you would like to get in the way of the sheep. One more time, just very quickly, brief synopsis, how you're going to obfuscate the other sheep from sight and put yourself in their place. Um, let's see. I didn't really think about that. Um, I will stand in front of a distract. Yeah, because Randira, Randira's Somehow. already standing there. Um, yeah, we could retro- Already doing that, already kind of- yeah, you didn't I'm even ready distract. in action or anything, so yeah. that's totally fair. We'll say that you can kind of retroactively yeah. ready in action. You're going to try and distract, so. Put my shield up and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can dig. I can dig that. Okay. So. Um... <laughs> uh, you stand up and distract, and we'll say that our Dan... Um... <laughs> Think, they're saying, can you pull the wool over? Think you can pull the wool over their eyes? Ha ha. Ha ha. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. 
Okay, so I like this. I like what's happening here. Essentially, you're standing in front of them going, Hey, look at me! Oh my gosh, I'm gonna hit you with my axe! Uh-oh! And you're kind of swinging this thing around going crazy. Uh, in the meanwhile, Ardan, who's still completely hidden, kind of stands in front of this other sheep. Um, and right before, like right at that precipice of when they might notice that you've been hidden by this strange bit of shadow, uh, you B-shape. And we'll say for flavor, there is a, a small poof of smoke, we'll say, or uh, a swirling bustling of leaves as your druidic shape changes from humanoid to sheep, uh, making an almost perfect semblance of the sheep in front of you. Um, you've done that, and it's to be assumed that you've made some effort of communication with this sheep to hide, right? So this is going to be difficult for you. Again, I'm not going to lie. This is going to be right, kind of difficult for you. But you can make me a deception check. Oh, um, no. I have no charisma modifier. I'm trying to convince them that you're the new sheep and this other sheep is not. All right. I will take, if you'd like to, to argue another point, I will certainly listen to it. Um, if you've got no, another stat that you think works better. Let's see. No, because I would even say, like, performance or persuasion, they're all charisma, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We'll just go for it. Okay, let's go for it. I like Maybe that. I haven't I haven't been a sheep too often, so. Oof. <laughs> so, you ro so you rolled a seven. That was not a success. Nope. Um, I will say, though, that there are now two sheep, and they do not know what to make of that. I will say that you were successful enough, and that they know now realize there are two sheep, uh, but they don't know which is which. So. Just imagining this sheep has, like, a characteristic mole on its cheek or something that I replicated. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a perfect... Yeah, do, do an uh, athletics check. No, yeah, it's got a perfect like dimple on one side, mm -hmm. no dimple on the other. It's got this a This is the sheep. I can recognize that dimple anywhere. Yeah, yeah, that would be interesting. It's an interesting little bit of flavor. Like maybe every time you replicate an animal shape, you do it, but it's like the, a perfect mirror image of it or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the sides are just slightly uh, flipped. Sheep-shaped birthmark. <laughs> that was bleep. <laughs> um, so let's say that. Ooh, you know that this sheep is going to take off because it's spooked, right? Um, is there anything that you would like to do preemptively because you've only used one action to change shape at this point? Um, so I'm a little confused now. Since I'm a sheep, can I talk to this sheep? Like in sheep language? Whatever that would be. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have to look at how that works. Um, let's take a look, actually. Do you? I don't know if you know the animal's language. Um. Because uh, I mean, if I can't, I'll just attempt to um, yeah. jump in front of the sheep to like be in his eyesight and catch his attention. I guess it's to be assumed that the this is territory that we that I'm not a hundred percent sure many people have trod upon. So I'm sure many people have trod upon it because what is it rule rule thirty whatever. Uh, yeah. But it's not well documented, uh, and and not that I'm going to sit here and look it up for five minutes mm -hmm. anyway. But I would say that we're making an assumption. <laughs> that sheeps have their own sheep language. <laughs> Beyond the fact that they're probably not smart enough to have their own sheep language. But we'll say that because you're a druid who knows common, and this wizard was a wizard that knows common, you were able, and that you've been sheep long enough or have communed with sheep long enough <laughs> to understand that you guys can ba legibly to each other. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I love that... it. Ability to speak is limited to my beast form. Is it, does it say that? In oh, thank God! If you found that, that would be great. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, where is that in the, in the block? It says That's that... What I was trying to find. Okay, fantastic. As long as somebody found it. Thank God for chat, because those little idiosyncrasies, those minutia sometimes escape me. I'm glad that it's listed somewhere. Thank you. Um, yeah, so you're, you're able to communicate, yes. Uh, you have taken an action, though, so anything less than a couple of words is probably going to be a complex action, which means that you would have to... I would say you could probably say something relatively complicated with your move action and your bonus action. Okay, so basically I'm just going to say, calm yourself. We have a plan, which we don't really, but... Just try to, you know, calm him down a little bit. Yeah, go ahead and make me a persuade because you're kind of trying to steal him against this frightening thing that's happening to him. Again, no charisma modifier. No charisma modifier? No. Nope. Um, let's see, does the... Sh the stats I'm using has virtually no charisma, so that's not good. Uh, you retain your alignment, personality, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma scores. You also retain all of your skill and saving throw proficiency. I was just reading that. <laughs> yeah. So, no, it's not going to go better for her because a sheep. <laughs> yeah, not great charisma. Um... I, it was a DC 10, but I'm going to... So I'm going to let that fly anyway. I was debating whether or not I was going to hire, make it higher or lower as you rolled, and 10 seems fair, so you've stealed him against running away. That's I think that's reasonable. Um, at that point, it is going to go to the sheep, who is going to hold fast, since you inspired him to do so. It trusts you now, and you are... It's kind of like a... It's pulling a Princess Leia on you, like you're my only hope. Um... <laughs> That's all it's going to do, but it is going to ready an action for that if the wolves creep, creep, creep up on it. Uh, it's gonna take a move action of 30 feet. Um, actually, 40 feet. Because I'm using a different stat block. Uh, after that, it goes to the wolves. Um, and the wolves are going to come back around the other side and get into that same flanking position that you saw them before. <sighs> it looks like they're probably waiting for the bear to act, and they're going to ready actions that if the bear closes the gap between the sheep, they are going to pincer it and try to restrain it. <laughs> Help me, Obi Kenobi. And then it goes back to the bear, which is exactly what's going to happen. Um, he's going to close the gap. The wolves are going to come up here. This is a whole chain of ready to actions. Jeez. They're going to try to pincer it. Um, the sheep, once it's pincered by the wolves, is going to do its run action, or at least try to like deftly ninja around. It doesn't really matter. I guess I would say it's probably trying to circle around to get closer to you or the other side of the wolves. But what that does is invoke... Attack of opportunity from both wolves, but they want to do non-lethal lethal damage. So, these wolves are going to attack the sheep because they ready their actions in better sequence. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Uh, the first wolf, wolf is going to gnash its jaws at the sheep, missing entirely. And the second is, in fact, going to grab hold of the sheep, dealing seven piercing damage with its teeth. Uh, the sheep looks weir worse for the wear. It does have some, uh, some, some puncture wounds caused by these teeth in its rump as it tried to run away, and it halted. It arrested its progress. Um, that didn't arrest its progress. You know what? I'm going to change my mind on that. I'm going to say it ran around here to try to get a more advantageous position for running away, should it need to, uh, but not straying too far from you. 
Um, and at that point, it's going to go to Randira. I can still see the sheep, correct? Yep, yep. So, um, I guess I'll rally him. Okay. Which is uh, ally. I see or hear you. Gains temporary hit points, 1d8 plus... Well, nothing, because I don't have a charisma bonus, so 1d8. 